Velkommen. Mit navn er Jeppe Tjengbjerg. Jeg driver Tjengbjerg Sundhedsuddannelser, hvor vi uddanner massageterapeuter, akupunktører og zoneterapeuter. Det vi laver her er en videopodcast til Massør Nyt, som er et online nyhedsbrev for netop massører, zoneterapeuter, akupunktører og andre manuelle behandlere. Vi har valgt at lave nogle interviews, som kan høres her på siden, så behandlerne kan vælge at modtage deres inspiration og idéer, mens de pusler med dagligdags ting. Øhm, dagens emne er øhm, jo klinikdrift eller klinikvejledning. Og det kan man gøre på en milliard forskellige måder. Mange af jer I har taget eller er i gang med sundhedsfaglig grunduddannelse, og der har vi jo et pensum, hvor vi snakker om øh, bogføring og regler og branche, branche, altså, hvad hedder sådan noget, øh, rapregistrering, og vi snakker skat og alt muligt andet. Alle de regler der. Dem har I, der har I læst et pensum, I har bestået en prøve, øh, og det vi laver her lige i øjeblikket handler om øh, god service, Management, måske nogle strategier for marketing og den slags Og øh, selvfølgelig kan man finde en dansker, øh, der kan fortælle et eller andet om det Men her har vi altså prøvet at finde en international stjerne inden for sådan noget her øh, Og, og øh, hun er helt fantastisk, så det, man får helt sikkert noget med hjem herfra Uanset om ens engelsk er sådan, skal vi kalde det, sådan den bløde mellemvare øh, Hun taler meget tydeligt og, øh, men, men I kan forsøge jo at øh, stille spørgsmål. Jeg ved, at hun også vil interagere med jer, så på en eller anden plan kan I ikke bare sidde der og sove, men I bliver nødt til at være en del af det. Øhm, det er klart, at øh, vi, vi laver det på den her måde, fordi vi jo ikke må være sammen. Det har I jo selvfølgelig luret. Øhm, men det er altså en del af rapgudkendelsen, det er, at man laver noget øh, hvad skal vi sige, tilstedeværelsesundervisning, med ved personlig fremmøde, og det, og det er det her også under de her omstændigheder. Vi laver også andet, for eksempel kl. 9 her i dag, der har jeg jo lagt på vores Facebook op, en, også noget om klinikdrift, det handler mere om hygiejne, der har en ekspert, og det er på dansk, så bare roligt, den kan I se, I kan gense den på vores Facebook, og også på vores YouTube, men altså der kan I se noget om, om renlighed og hygiejne, det er faktisk ret spændende også. Og så nu laver vi så det her webinar med Maria, som tager måske to timer. Vi skal nok alle sammen prøve at være skarpe, jeg har, fordi det er lang tid at sidde foran skærmen og høre engelsk, hvis man ikke er vant til det. Og med hensyn til øh, Maria, så er Maria øh, en, 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 spa, en ekspert inden for øh, service og, øh, og spagverden. Hun skal nok inter- øh, fortælle, hvem hun er og hvad hendes baggrund er. Jeg mødte hende i 2018 til øh, verdens største øh, spa- og wellness-festival, som øh, er russisk. Øh, det foregik nede i Sochi, det der skisportsted, man også havde noget, øh, noget vinter-OL her for, for nogle få år siden. Og øh, det er sådan et sted, hvor øh, kollegaer fra selvfølgelig hovedsageligt de russisk talende lande, men også øh, fra hele verden kommer. Og, øh, og hvad skal vi sige, øh, hjælper hinanden med at, øh, og, og tilberede, eller at forberede undervisning og, og inspirere hinanden Og man deler simpelthen sin viden Og det er det hun også øh, har valgt at gøre her Hende og jeg har arbejdet, jeg har været i Rusland et par gange Hvor jeg har været over at arbejde, hvor hun så har fungeret som min, som min øh, hvad skal vi sige, oversætter Fordi det er der så behov for i Rusland til gengæld For de er ikke så generelt gode til engelsk øh, Men det er I og det er danskere, så I vil helt sikkert øh, kunne følge med her. Så, men altså, jeg skal nok prøve at være her i baggrunden og styre nogle ting, og jeg skal nok også prøve at følge med, men jeg er rigeligt udfordret med at styre teknikken her. Så, øh, Maria Filatova, kan du høre mig? Yes, of course. I, have... I don't understand you, but I can hear you. <laughs> It's not so nice when you don't understand it. I know. Anyway, uh, welcome to this webinar. You uh, have just introduced you as an expert within spa and wellness uh, industry and uh, of course you can uh, introduce yourself in a, in a little while. I had also told that uh, you and I we met 
during the Topspa Fest in uh, 2018. Um, and uh, you have, I, I didn't tell them that you have uh, taught here on the school the last two years, but now they know. Uh, and uh, I have been in, in Russia uh, doing some work and where you, you have to help me a lot. So um, that's the background and the webinar is called uh, Clinical Management. And I know you are an expert in this, so please take over from here. Okay. Thank you, Yepia. Thank you for the introduction. Hopefully you told something beautiful about me. <laughs> Not only bad things, uh, but lucky for you, I don't understand Danish at all. <laughs> I tried to catch a few words, but no. Unfortunately, not yet. Even if I was like two, two times already yeah, in uh, Denmark and uh, I was hopefully to come this uh, year to see you in person, not uh, online, but unfortunately, as for everybody, coronavirus changed our plans. So today, guys, we're seeing each other in uh, online and hopefully we will enjoy the time as much as in offline. Uh, so what we will do today, we will talk about the service uh, because uh, I believe that the service is uh, must have for every person uh, who is working in, uh, with people <laughs> in any kind of hospitality business or clinics or massage uh, treatment rooms, doesn't matter. Uh, and we should be, uh, of course, aware of uh, the best standards uh, which we has in uh, which we have in this uh, industry. So that's what I would talk about uh, today, and hopefully uh, it would inspire you to grow in this uh, field and uh, to develop not only your massage skills but also your professional skills and service. Uh, okay. So just before we start, some uh, rules how to make the webinar more effective. I think uh, Yeppe already managed to, to know, so to tell about some of them, but we will repeat. First of all, if uh, you can, please turn on your camera. For me, it would be uh, easier to communicate with you and to see you, see your faces. Thank you for everybody who is here. Uh, guys, nice to see you. Huh? Many people we have here. Uh, turn off the sound, please. Uh, if you want to have the word, then you can turn on and uh, we will talk. Uh, turn off your calls during the training. It's also important to check. Uh, of course, open your mind. Uh, today I would try to talk about the five-star service and I would talk a lot about the luxury business, uh, but uh, there are two ways uh, to get the information. I believe in this. First of all, to tell, oh, it's not for me. I have totally different situation uh, and it doesn't help to learn. Uh, and the second uh, position is uh, to think, how can I implement this in my job? So for me, this is the professional attitude and for me, this is more effective attitude. So I, uh, of course, strongly recommend you to think about this. So every time when I'm talking about something, just think how I can use it, how I can implement it in uh, my uh, daily uh, uh, job. Be in the moment, be active, uh, please participate. Uh, I think uh, we would, uh, as uh, we have uh, almost 30 people here, uh, already 31 even, uh, I don't have uh, the opportunity to talk to every one of you, uh, but we have uh, the chat here and uh, please use it. Uh, I would ask you to answer the questions. Please uh, write me down some uh, information. Uh, it would be uh, more effective for both of us. So take a pen and paper. If you didn't do this, uh, write down your main thoughts. Uh, you will receive uh, the PowerPoints. Yes, yep, yeah, good student. <laughs> uh, so you will receive the PowerPoints and we have the record of this uh, webinar. But uh, if we write down something, uh, we uh, better remember this. So just some highlights, some insights, some ideas that will emerge during the 
uh, during my speech. Uh, just take the notes and it helps. Also, you will have at the end of the webinar, you will have their homework. And uh, I strongly recommend you to do this homework uh, and to revise the materials uh, during next 72 hours. Uh, this is the magic, uh, magic figure actually, this 72 hours, uh, because it's uh, already proven uh, by the scientists that this is uh, actually three nights after the like three, uh, three sleepovers after, um, after something you learned, uh, after some activity. Uh, this uh, knowledge either goes to your uh, memory or it skips and you just totally forget it. So it depends on you uh, if you will take something from this webinar or you wouldn't take it. So please do homework and please revise materials. It will help you to and help your, your, your mind uh, to, how to say it, uh, to take these uh, skills and take these knowledges. And uh, of course, it's very important uh, to define for yourself your today's goal. What are you here for? What do you want to learn from me? What do you want to get from this webinar? Uh, what's maybe is your issue? What's your problem uh, or you would like to solve? Or what's the knowledge you would like to gain? Uh, so please think about this and we will uh, come back to this and I will ask you once again. So you have now like, uh, a couple of minutes to think about this. So, okay, uh, everybody agree, uh, hopefully to the rules. Uh, let's move uh, further. Uh, let me introduce myself a little bit again. So my name is, I told, uh, as Yepi told already, is Maria Filatova, and I'm the co-owner and the managing partner of three businesses. Uh, Red Spa Management, Red Service School, and Five Spa. I would uh, tell a little bit uh, more about them later. So I have uh, over 20 years of experience in the luxurious service business. I worked in five-star hotels and uh, in world-famous spas, uh, in the chains like Ritz-Carlton or the Rixes, uh, in independent hotels. So I'm quite experienced in service and uh, actually my life is uh, uh, connected with the service for 20 years for most <laughs> the biggest part of my life. Uh, so I have experience of spa openings and management for more than 10 years. I'm working uh, exactly in the spas and uh, I opened uh, more than five spas around uh, Russia. Uh, and also I have uh, experience of management and uh, consulting uh, of the spas all around the world. Um, I'm the spa expert, I'm speaker and attendant of different Russian and international conferences. And uh, also I'm proud to be recommended teacher of uh, International Massage Association. Thank you, Yuepi, uh, <laughs> for providing me such an honor. So my main responsibilities, my main uh, things that which I could be useful for you with is uh, business planning, the strategy, the uh, management of the cleanings and spas and financial control and budgeting and marketing and promotion. So this is what I'm responsible for in my company and in our clients' companies. So hopefully... Uh, my experience would be interesting and useful for you. So this is three companies uh, which we're owning now in Russia with my partner, Maria Sonina. Red Spa Management, uh, the company which is uh, consulting and management uh, business. Uh, also service uh, School of Red. Uh, we provide the service trainings for the spa managers, for the spa owners, as well as for the uh, receptionists, um, um, therapists, of course, uh, the people who work, yes, in the massage and in the treatment rooms. And uh, we work not only with the spas, but with the wellness centers as well, uh, with different kinds of fitnesses, uh, hotels, restaurants. So actually everywhere. Uh, where people need service, uh, we are there. Uh, and also we own uh, our spa centers and spa catering and run uh, the business under the five spa brand. Uh, so it's B2C business. We're working with the clients. 
uh, and uh, understand the daily routine and understand uh, the daily things uh, which are coming uh, to all of you. So I think uh, our uh, experience is quite, um, maybe a, quite different with you, but also quite uh, similar because we have a lot of experience of working with the spa therapist, uh, massagist, uh, uh, therapist, whatever you call it. So, okay, that's for the introduction. Uh, just look about uh, our experience and our clients uh, and let me back uh, to the goals of today and to the topics which we will cover today. Uh, and uh, I ask you uh, to write in the chat, please ask, uh, please everybody, give me some feedback and write in the chat, what's your goal for today? What do you want to have today? Of course, preferable uh, in uh, English, if you can. Uh, if you cannot do it in English, please write in uh, Danish and Yepi will help me with the translation. Yes, Yepi. <laughs> okay, guys. Please uh, write uh, in the chat, what's your goal for today? What do you want to achieve today? What do you want to receive from me today? Uh, which knowledge, uh, what information, uh, what advice maybe? Um, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Input to start a business. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kirsten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To act like a professional in my marketing, okay. More about marketing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More knowledge to get clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Service and business marketing, okay. Thank you, Martin about service to my clients, Tobias, yeah, we will talk about this definitely. In the service part, mm-hmm, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, who else? Learn to avoid the most common failures when starting up a new business, okay. Mm -hmm. To be more professional, uh -huh. more knowledge and inspiration, how to appear more professional and improve getting new customers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's wait for some. Mm -hmm. Get inspira inspiration and information, tips and tricks on how to start. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to run a business and, uh-huh. To a higher level, okay. Okay, guys, uh-huh, and uh, one more question. I see that uh, there is a lot of questions about the startups, uh, uh, and but some questions are about the existing business. Uh, can you please uh, put the number in the, in the chat? If you are just starting the business, put one. Uh, if you already have the business uh, for some time, uh, put the two. So startup one, uh huh, uh, business two. Okay, just to understand how much people uh, from both sides. Uh huh, two, two, one. One, uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as I see from the numbers, mostly uh, like 70 to 30 persons. Yeah. In start of the business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you a lot. What is good service and start of business? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we will talk today more about service. Uh, but uh, what is important uh, uh, to know to you from the start, <laughs> I will uh, use all uh, your words <laughs> in my presentation. So it doesn't matter if you are in the start of the business or you're already uh, doing something, you should know one rule about the marketing of service. 
So the most important thing in the marketing of service, marketing of the treatment is the service itself. This is very important to understand. Uh, and uh, maybe the next time we will gather with you to talk about the brand and marketing more. Uh, and uh, then we will discuss the question, uh, but you can uh, actually write down this question to you and to think about this uh, in your uh, spare time. So what's the difference between the marketing of the service and marketing of the product? Uh, what's the difference if you sell the car and if you sell the treatment? It's actually very interesting uh, thing uh, to think about this. And I think you will have a lot of insights. Uh, but uh, be back to my uh, point. Uh, the most important thing in marketing of service is the service itself. So the people are coming to get some uh, things and uh, you should provide them the quality. Uh, this is very important in service because if uh, the product is bad, you can uh, change it, you can send it back. If the service is bad, you cannot do it. You cannot uh, bring it back and say the service was bad. Uh, please change it. So this is very important to remember and that's why we would talk about the service a lot today. Uh, so. Thank you for writing your, down your goals. I will also tell uh, my goals for today. So first of all, of course, I would like to share my knowledge about the service because I'm 20 years in this and believe me, I know a lot. Uh, I want to share my practical experience and tools which we use in our daily business and which our clients use in our daily business and uh, which help them to improve uh, and uh, to get uh, the highest results. And of course, I would like to help you to evaluate and improve your own service. So to inspire you and to give you some uh, life hacks and tricks, how you could improve your service in your company and your business, in your uh, cabin, uh, in your treatment room, whatever. What I will talk about today, what you will learn from me today, what I would like to share. First, we'll talk about the five star service culture. What is it? How to implement it? How to think in this way? Uh, we will talk about the basic principles of the spa service. Uh, so what's uh, the spa service, uh, how it differs uh, from um, other kinds of service, what uh, lays uh, in the bottom of the spa service. And of course, we'll talk a little bit about the five-star service standards. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, already before, I would talk much about and I would talk a lot about five-star hotels, about the five-star spas. Uh, and of course you could tell me, I'm not working in the five-star uh, place. I don't want to work in this five-star hotel. Why should I learn this? Why should I know? I have totally different business. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> you don't have totally different business. Uh, you have the same business. Uh, and it depends only from you. Uh, if you're working in the five-star environment, if you're creating this environment or you do not do it. Uh, and of course, I believe that uh, it's always better to learn from the best experiences. Uh, and uh, I don't know better companies to learn about the service, like five-star hotels and five-star spas. Uh, so let's learn from the best experience. Let's get uh, what we can get from that. Uh, and of course, uh, you will see that sometimes good service doesn't take money. So because usually when I'm talking about the five-star service, I hear, okay, Maria, five-star hotels, they have so much money. Five-star spas, they have so many money. I don't have such budget. I don't have such uh, uh, facilities. Uh, you will see from my examples, I tried to get uh, such an example so that you will see that uh, sometimes and even usually it doesn't take money. Most of the time it takes your effort and your consideration, your mindset. Uh, and that's my idea for today. And that's my goal for today to change your mindset, uh, to tell you how you can think in the five star level and how you can implement this to your daily life and how you could uh, create the five-star environment uh, whenever you are and wherever you work to. 
Uh, but uh, the quote, uh, which I took from uh, my dear friend, Jeppe Tenberg, <laughs> uh, he told me once, and I believe in this as well, that teachers only open the doors, but you must enter by yourself. So that's why I ask you to be active. That's why I ask you to be uh, proactive and to come with any questions and uh, to come with any ideas that, that emerge to you. So. Uh, that was the introductional uh, part. If you have any questions now, just write them to the chat. Uh, I will see it through. Uh, about the timing, uh, I think it would take uh, us approximately two hours, maybe less, maybe a little bit more. Let's see how it's going. Uh, and uh, if you have some questions, write me down. Uh, if you don't have any questions, just uh, let's go. And let's start from the five-star service culture. Uh, and my first question to you in this uh, part, uh, what do you think? Why should you learn about service? And why should you think about it? Write me down again uh, some of your ideas and some of your thoughts about this in the chat. Uh, why should you learn something about the service? Why should you invest your money and time and effort? What does it give to you? Uh, what it brings to your life, maybe? Hmm? Please write down to the chat your answers. Or if you want, uh, somebody want to speak up, it would be also nice. Okay, if, uh, yes, if we have bad uh, service, clients doesn't come back. If we have good service, clients do come back. Yeah. <laughs> Great service will make customers come back. Yes, and recommends you, totally agree with you. Yes, return. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very important if you want to have clients. Mm -hmm. How does it help you to have clients? So we, we already discussed that uh, they return better, that, yeah, we, they come back. Also, they recommend you, so they bring you the new customers. I want my customer to have a good experience and come back and recommend me to others. Okay, it's great, because this is actually uh, the definition of good service, why we do it. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. I got a good, oh, by being the best. Yes, I totally agree with you. It's really a rewarding feeling when you are uh, providing the good service. Good service is our selling point, definitely. Hmm. It makes us outstanding, happy clients. Uh-huh, okay. Yes, be the best, yeah, yeah. So to be the best version of you. Uh, I totally agree with everybody, <laughs> with everybody. I think it's a natural part of the experience, yeah. Customers will feel safe and comfortable and will, be, uh, yes, yes, recommend and our reputation. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, uh, you're all totally right. So of course, the first why we are doing uh, the service to provide the best experience to your guests. So they should be more satisfied, yes? So they would be more, more happy. Uh, second one, of course, to be stronger than your competitors, to attract more clients uh, and to attract better clients. Uh, and of course, to be more effective, not to lose the clients, uh, to have uh, the retention and so on. Uh, of course, to build trust with your guests, to ensure your client's retention and loyalty. It's what we talked about. And again, if we're talking about the marketing, uh, I would give you some, uh, some points about the marketing as well. Uh, now, a lot of experts are believing uh, that we are, first of all, we live in the world where we come into the competition in the service field. So what I said is that the battle now is in the service field because all the techniques, uh, all the equipment doesn't matter so much anymore. It have more or less the similar level. And now we're coming to the battlefield of service. So it's becoming more and more uh, important. Uh, 
And uh, the second, what the uh, marketologist, the world-known marketologist is talking about, is uh, that we are living now in the economy of trust. So what we are selling and what we are buying is the trust. If I don't trust you, I wouldn't come. If I don't trust, if you don't trust Yepi, you wouldn't come to this webinar. If you don't trust me, you wouldn't listen to me and so on. So the most important now uh, from the uh, point of view of marketing is to build the trust with the customers. That's what we're talking about when we're so talking about the social media or something like this. You should build the trust. You should uh, explain why people should invest their time and efforts and uh, their money to you. Uh, do you deserve it? So of course, its uh, service helps us a lot to build the trust with the guests. And of course, to get recommendations from the clients, it's also the trust. I wouldn't recommend you if I wouldn't trust you. Uh, to be stronger than your competitors, we told uh, already, and to be more popular, more valued, and well-paid professional, yeah, if come to the bottom line, to get more satisfaction from the job, yes, to get more money, to get more clients, and service really helps us here. Service really still is very big competitive uh, advantage if we say it in the marketing language. So still, uh, we have a lot of uh, things to improve uh, in the service battlefield. <laughs> so let's do it. It's important, yeah, as well. Uh, one more question. What do you think? In what industry are we working? So in what field are you working? Guys, what is it? What do you think? Service, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jane. B2C, uh huh. B2C, so we are working in the client's business. Service, service is a keyword, great. Health, mm -hmm. service and health. Health and service, service industry, uh huh. Health and well being. Okay, great, great, great. Okay service okay so usually when i'm asking this question experience and health oh it's also nice guys you are really um good in marketing <laughs> we're really selling experience i'm totally agree with you mental and somatic wellness service and well-being okay yes definitely so healthcare, relaxation lifestyle beauty wellness uh spa and service uh and my favorite word is this i call it like this, huh? okay. So I think and uh, I believe that we work in hospitality business. So yeah, if we're working all together in some kind of the industry, for me, service business, spine wellness industry, uh, even healthcare prevention health is not only about the health and medicine, but mostly about the service and hospitality. That's why I am using so lot the word guest and you will hear it from me and Yepi asked me to give the explanation <laughs> uh, why do I use the word guest so uh, I don't know guys what uh, what uh, you usually deal with the clients the customers uh, for me the guest is better and uh, actually uh, if you will come to any hospitality business like five-star hotel of the five-star spa of the five-star restaurant you will see uh, that everywhere they use uh, the word guest so it comes from me like 20 years ago and still believe that's the best word first of all because it describes uh, very good uh, uh, the um, how to say it uh, the business processes which are taken uh, and we will talk about this uh, but uh, for me, the five-star level of service is the highest level of hospitality. So it's like the top of the top. So uh, we can be hostile, we can be hospital, we can uh, like to invite the people to our house to through some parties to make some or we don't like it it doesn't matter uh, but if we are coming to the business if we are coming to the uh, service 
Of course, the five-star level of service is the highest level of hospitality. It's the best of the best. It's like, you know, the hospitality, which became almost religion. If you will come to the five-star uh, companies like Ritz Carlton, Four Seasons, you will see there a lot of people who are really uh, believe in service, like in... Uh, some kind of the magic, some kind of the, I don't know. So it uh, really helps in many, 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 many things. Uh, and I'm ambassador of the service as well. <laughs> so I also believe in service. And uh, for me, it's also almost uh, like, you know, uh, almost uh, the way of thinking. Hospitality that has become your internal culture. That's what happens if you are talking and if you are thinking of the style of service all the time. It's uh, became your second nature. So you don't uh, uh, think of it uh, already like something separate. It's becoming your internal culture. And this is beautiful, actually. This is the beauty of service, that it improves your life a lot. It uh, really helps uh, to make your life more uh, interesting, more relaxed, uh, more nice because you know how to communicate with the people, you know how to create atmosphere, uh, you know how to uh, make things beautiful. I think it helps in life, you know. So that's why I like it as well. So coming back to the guest or client issue, uh, why I like uh, the guest and host. So host, client and uh, who? <laughs> uh, like this what is the what is the ob so if I'm uh, the client who are you I forgot the word in English what's what's on the opposite but if I am the guest you are the host yes if you are the guest I am the host and this is a little bit different uh, different relationships I think uh, Let's see what's going on from the guest side of you and the host sides of you. And you will see that it's the same business process we have there. First, the host invites the guest, yeah? So let's remind how, <laughs> how of course now we have in the coronavirus, we have not so many guests, I believe, but still, first we invite them. That's what we're doing in our business. We invite people with our marketing, with our promotion, with our uh, different kind of social medias. We're saying, please come, please come, we're here for you. Uh, and the guest takes in the invitation. Uh, then the perfect host prepare their place, prepare the entertainment and prepare the food. We think what, how we should uh, make the comfortable, yes, how we should make the place beautiful, how we should make the, uh, our treatment room beautiful, how we should uh, prepare ourselves, how we should look like, uh, what I will be wearing. Uh, so this is all the questions that we are thinking when we are making the host, making the guests. Of course, we warm welcome our guests. Of course, we take care of our guests during the visit. Of course, we farewell them with, war with warmth and uh, we invite them to come again. Yeah? Do we do it? <laughs> or it's only me? <laughs> so, and of course, afterwards, uh, usually good uh, guest or good host, afterwards we write down, thank you for coming. Sometimes we even send uh, the postcard, thank you for coming. It was such a pleasure to, uh, to be your host, to, be, uh, to take you in my place and so on. So this is what the perfect host is doing. And actually that's what we're doing in our everyday business, yes? Do you invite people to come to your treatment room? I think yes, yeah. Uh, do you prepare the place? Do you prepare the, everything inside? Hopefully you do, and we'll talk, we will talk about this later. Uh, we prepare ourselves, uh, we make our um, uniform looking nice, so we think about our hairstyle and so on, and that we will talk about the standards as well. And then step by step, we're doing all the same. So, and of course we're expecting, what's the difference between the customer uh, and the guest? Because from the customer, we do not expect a lot. 
uh, the customer is always right. Uh, the customer, what else they said? So I don't believe that customer is always right. I'm in service for 20 years. I've seen so many customers who was totally unright, <laughs> who was totally be unbehaving themselves. And that's why when we're talking about the customers, it's he is always right. It's like he is plus and I must, I'm a minus. It doesn't work in the long-term relationships. But when I'm host, I'm the host, I'm owning the place, I'm running the business, I'm, it's my place, I have uh, rules here, I'm setting the rules here. And of course, I'm very nice host. I, of course, I'm glad to see everybody here. Of course, I'm doing a lot to attract a lot of people. But of course, I expect also the respectful attitude. And I can ask the guest to behave them, himself. And I can uh, ask him to leave if he doesn't behave himself according to my rules, because I'm the host, I'm owning the place. And my guest should understand this as well. And I think this is very important uh, when you are working a service to understand that it's not the customer who is the king of the place, but it's you who are the host. That's why I'm thinking this uh, guest and host uh, structure is more, uh, more, uh, how to say it, uh, more right for our business. That's why I'm using always the word host. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's also, yeah, no, thank you for question. I will write it, so to read it uh, loud. So, so is it also a process of putting yourself in the mind frame of a host to help yourself to behave properly like a mask? Yes, uh, I don't like uh, the word uh, mask <laughs> because now it's a little bit a uh, strange word for me. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's of course the mind frame. I totally agree with the word mind frame. So you are coming into the role of the host. Yes, uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, use this word. Yes, the role and mind frame. Uh, yes, and it helps you to behave properly, but it helps your guest to behave properly as well. Because you are, uh, so what I also like about the service and communication, when you behave somehow, and when you are in this mind frame and in this mindset, uh, the opposite side is the same. This is about the professionalism, actually. If you're acting like professional host, your guest, believe me, I've seen it quite a lot of times in my career. The second part will also make uh, his role as a perfect guest. Maybe not such a perfect, but good one. <laughs> so it's also helped them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you send the signal to them. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's be back to the, what is the five-star service culture? So if we'll take the word by word, uh, you will see that the culture is the codes and rules that determine your work. Uh, if we're talking about the five-star, the five-star is an exclusive set of services and personalized attention to each guest. So if you will see the definition uh, of the five-star hotel, or the five-star restaurant, or the five-star in, uh, I don't know, spa, in the vocabulary, you see this uh, definition. Exclusive set of services and personalized attention to each guest. For me, it's very important to remember this. So if you do not provide some exclusive set of services, exclusive doesn't mean uh, that you in your treatment room should beat, uh, I don't know, the five-star hotel on Maldives. It's uh, not possible, yeah? But exclusive from somebody next door. Exclusive from somebody who is uh, just around the corner. So exclusive in your field. So if you provide this exclusive set of services, and if you provide personalized attention to each guest, then you are providing five-star service. Hmm? Please remember this. And also, this is a way of thinking and acting aimed at understanding, anticipating, and fulfilling the wishes and expectations of the guests. So the service, if coming very short, to provide the best service, 
you should predict, fulfill, and exceed demands and expectations of your guests. So actually in service, we work with demands and expectations. We should know them. And sometimes in the good service, we should just not just know them, but exceed them to make more. Your person, so your client is coming looking for the basic massage and you are giving something more and you're providing the best service. Hopefully this is, because this is very important to understand uh, and to think, because I will come back to this again and again. So in the service, we work with the expectations. In marketing of the service, we work with the expectations. What they have in the basic, uh, what, they have, what are their basic needs and demands? What are their, what, how we can exceed this? That's the question we should ask uh, ourselves every day. How do I know the demands and needs of my customer? Do I fulfill them? If okay, if yes, this is okay, this is good. But if you exceed them, if you're doing extra mile, if you're doing something more, then you have the five-star service. This is how it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Yepi, yes, uh, I will come back, Yepi, thank you for this. Uh, uh -huh. So, the main goal of the excellent service, and when you were asked, answering why do you need the service, you wrote me, somebody wrote uh, almost uh, in these words. So, the main goal of the excellent service, to make your guest happy, so that he wants to use your service again, and recommends you to as many people as possible. This is the definition and this is the goal, the business goal actually, uh, of the service. Satisfaction, if we are coming to the marketing rules, uh, so to marketing terms, satisfaction of the guest, uh, then it comes to the retention and to the loyalty, and then it comes to the recommendations. So that's how we know if our service is good or not. First, we ask our guests, are they satisfied? Yes, maybe you've heard about the NPS forms and so on. So if he's satisfied with our uh, service, uh, it's better if he is even over satisfied. Yeah, when he said, wow, it was really wow. Uh, so this is the highest rank. So first of all, we ask him if he's happy. Then we see if we have the retention. Uh, if the people return to us. And uh, Yepi wrote here uh, that the Danish studies uh, show that only one third of our clientele are returning. And uh, mm -hmm. actually, yes, uh, good service can raise it. Good service, uh, of course, should raise it. Because uh, normally, uh, in our management system, uh, when we're managing the spas and uh, when we're managing, uh, we're talking with the therapists, uh, we set the benchmark at the 60% of the retention. Two thirds of the people should come back. Can I interrupt? Yes, so you can add. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm, I mean, um, this number one third is actually surprising high. And uh, I think uh -huh, we have, we can, yeah, but we can gain uh, we can gain more uh, clients uh, and raise uh, the income by giving good service. Of course, this is the uh, whole point. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I just think it's actually something that we can work with, and uh, and I'm pretty sure that if you do not make give good service or average, it will fall uh, the number of uh, people who return. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you whether you have any surveys who can disagree with that or anything. What is your experience? Uh, so my experience, of course, uh, is uh, that the service can increase. So as I told you, in the places with the good service, where uh, we definitely know that the service is good, uh, up to sixty percent are coming back. So. It's uh, if you can even uh, add ten percent, it would be so. Not thirty percent, but forty percent. It would be great. But if you can double these figures, 
you can understand the numbers. So of course, uh, it's really great to invest in the service because you, first of all, you see the very uh, quick response. Actually, after the first day, uh, when you're trying to do something better, your, your clients, your guests are telling you, I see the improvement and th they are willing to come back. So service definitely, this is one of the KPIs actually, one of the business, um, uh, how to say it, business metrics, which we are looking for is the retention, the return of the clients. So because it's uh, what, uh, so the retention, because uh, um, how to say it, inviting of new customers is the marketing metric yeah so it's uh, all about the marketing if your social media works if your advertising uh, companies works and so on uh, but you cannot invest all the time in the marketing yeah every time you are bringing uh, the customer to your business they should stay there or you are losing the money so this is very important to understand and only one thing can help you uh, to keep the people there, it's the service. If you will provide bad service, they will go to some place else. Even if you have, uh, uh, so as the people who are working with the massage techniques, I could say you, uh, I could tell you that I've seen a lot of examples that people with better service were more, uh, how to say it, more popular, uh, more demanded than the people with the good massage techniques. So as the professional, I can see, of course, the difference between one massage and the second massage. Uh, the people who are coming to you, they are not professionals. They see uh, only the difference in attitude. They see the difference in good attitude and bad attitude. They are not so experienced in massage, uh, they are, but they are really experienced in service, actually. So that's why sometimes it's even more wiser to invest in the service skills than into the massage technique skills. I don't want to spoil your business yet, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's true because uh, especially in Russia, we see sometimes some crazy things. People investing like crazy in uh, uh, one technique, two technique, they know Thai, Swedish, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, Russian, uh, this kind, Indian, uh, this kind of massage, that kind of massage, but it doesn't bring them customers. Because at the end of the day, customer just want the guest just want to understand that he has he is in the professional hands. It doesn't matter do you use a Thai technique with me or you are using the Swedish technique. I need the result. Yeah, I have the back uh, so the pain in my back, and also I see the attitude. So that's why it's very important to invest in the service. Uh, many people see it as a luxury. I want to make it a service you use on a regular. No, not yet. Uh -huh. uh, uh, of course, first people come in to us to get some, to get the things done. Yeah, this is the basic need. If I'm coming to massage, it's because I have something in my back or I have some pain or I need some relax or I need something. So first of all, of course, uh, they come in to have the basic, um, basic service, yeah, the basic product. But this is our field of the improvement. Okay, you are coming to me to get the basic massage. You doesn't expect anything because before you were in like medical clinic uh, uh, or in some place where they just were doing like lay here, Massage, 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 goodbye. And then you just say hi, <laughs> more warm, in more warm. Or you're just uh, doing atmosphere, creating the atmosphere in your, uh, in your treatment room. It doesn't cost money. It just, as I told you, it costs attitude and people see the attitude. Believe me, they see it. And uh, it shouldn't uh, cost much more lot and it should be all luxurious thing. Just small details service is all about the details we will come to back to this okay so mm -hmm. they should be addicted yes because uh, with this small 
uh, details, they just come in and they just enjoying themselves. They're coming to the better place. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, okay, so from the first and until the last step, the guest must feel our care, our warmth, our attention and love. Does it cost money? No, it just costs attitude and thinking through. Yes, just to think about this. Uh, four main ingredients of five-star service is self-motivation. And uh, this is, I think, the most important ingredient. You cannot become the world champion without self-motivation. Yes, Yepi? Uh, I like <laughs> I like the quote. There is uh, such a book about the service. I quote it a lot, uh, and uh, there is the story about uh, the the guy who is owning the restaurant, uh, and the journalists come into this restaurant, and this is very popular restaurant in Chicago. They have like uh, thirty years, thirty years of experience, always fully booked, and so on. Uh, and the journalist is asking this uh, owner, so how do you motivate the people uh, to be such service oriented, to be such service champions? Uh, and this guy, his name is Charlie Trotter, he says, uh, okay, how you can motivate somebody to be the Olympic champion? What should you promise to person? What should you give to person? that he would uh, every day train, he would f have failures, he would win sometimes, but from day to day, like 10 years of his life, he would spend to become the Olympic champion. What should you promise? How you should motivate him? There's nothing you can do, except he wants it himself. So this is, he said, the Charlie Trotter, he said, this is my uh, purpose and my goal to find these Olympic champions of the service. You're working, most of you, in the small businesses, so you should become the Olympic champion yourself first. Do you want to be the Olympic champion of service or not? It depends only on you. So self-motivation is the key pillar, so number one. Uh, the second one is standards. Uh, no good service, uh, no any good uh, company with the good service will have standards. And I strongly recommend you to have standards. Even if you are working all alone in one treatment room, still it will help you a lot. Believe me, we will talk about this. Third one is atmosphere. Uh, and as somebody already mentioned, and I totally agree with this, we are working in the uh, industry of entertainment as well and we are working uh, and I'm even thinking that uh, sometimes we are selling the atmosphere not the massage itself not the beauty itself not the treatment itself we send in the atmosphere people are coming to be in nice places to be in um, with good people in beautiful places, it's somehow, we will talk about this, it somehow heals us, you know? Uh, and I will tell you how it does. It's really uh, all about uh, our nature, it's nothing else. And of course, teamwork. So if you have any associate, if you have any uh, team member, if you have the girl uh, in the second cabin or in the second treatment room who is working with you uh, in different ways, you should have teamwork. Believe me, it works on service. Without teamwork, you would not provide the good service. If uh, one day uh, in, your, in your clinic, uh, the service is uh, in one level, so, for example, on Tuesday and Thursday, we have best service forever. On Sunday, we don't have service at all. It doesn't work like this. You should put the standards and you should have this teamwork. So, uh, let's come to the second part and talk about the basic principles of spa service. So, what's uh, the key pillars of the spa service, how the spa service differs from anything other, how it differs from medicine, how it differs, um, mm -hmm. 
Yes, clients, yes, yep, yes. Also expect a special atmosphere when, when they enter in a couple, yeah. Uh, they expect something and you can exceed this. If you're doing what they expect, it's good. Yes, if you are meeting their expectations, it's great. If you can do something to exceed, to give them more, to provide better experience, they would be wow. <laughs> and there would be uh, the retention and there would be the good service and all these benefits which we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, let's come to the basic principles of spa service. And first of all, uh, what I would like to talk about is the holistic approach. Uh, what is holistic approach? Actually, all the spa service about is about holistic approach. Do you know about uh, this? Did you hear this uh, word before? Guys, if yes, give me the plus. Uh, how to deep to go into details. So did you hear about the holistic approach? Uh-huh. Yes, great. So then I don't need to go a little. If you don't know anything about this, give the minus so I understand that. Uh, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you. Uh huh. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so like 50 50. Somebody knows about this, uh, somebody doesn't know. So, what is holistic approach? Uh, in holistic approach, we believe uh, that um, that the natural and specially created factors they have a huge impact on the human body. So actually, what's around us is uh, impact on what's inside us. Are you agree with this? Do you agree with this? So everything what's around impact our, our inside. This is the holistic approach. We believe uh, that we are, as the human body, we are the, um, how to say it, we are in unity with the outside, with the nature, with the, our surroundings and so on. Uh, and from here comes two things. First, human health is considered as a unity of physical, physiological and energy aspects. So we work on physical, physiological and energy aspects. And as a result, a person is influenced by the surroundings, but also he is uh, influenced by, mm, just, just a moment, I lose my thought. So human health is the unity of physical, physiological and energy aspects, and we are influenced by our surroundings. This is the holistic approach. This is the main philosophy behind the spa. And here in these holistic principles, we have three uh, main things. First, integrity. The impact on the body is based on the balance of all human organs and systems as a whole, as well as the balance between human and nature. So inside we are holistic, yeah? We are whole inside. So we have uh, all our systems are working as one. And also we are whole with the, our surroundings, with our nature. Mm -hmm. So this is called integrity. Then we have polysensitivity. Oh, difficult word. <laughs> uh, polysensitivity. So we have multiply channels of sense. Uh, we have uh, five senses, basic. Uh, and the effect of the holistic approach is carried through all of these senses. We cannot ignore one of the senses because we get the information from all of them. And of course, the third holistic principle is comfort. This is what differs spa a lot from different kind of uh, like medicine and something like this. Here we're thinking about the comfort of our guest. We think about the comfort of our client. The impact should be pleasant to the client and cause a positive psycho-emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. So every time when they're thinking about something, we should understand, would it bring, would it be pleasant? Would it be comfortable for the client? Or it wouldn't be. 
if it doesn't, uh, if it isn't comfortable, then we don't do it. This is uh, the holistic approach. This is the principle of holistic approach. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it is clear because it's a little bit, uh, a lot of terms and uh, terms and uh, words, but I think it's more or less uh, understandable for you. We are whole, we are system which interacts inside and outside. From outside, we get uh, the information from five senses, and that's why we should think of these five senses. And it should be comfortable. This is the holistic approach. And talking about uh, the five senses of perception, uh, how we use them in the spa, how we work with them in the spa. First of all, let's talk about the vision. This is the main channel for us to get the information. And of course, visual, uh, so the vision, the place, uh, the details, everything that the person sees when he is coming to us should be visually appealed. It should be nice. It should be beautiful. It should bring him some kind of the natural look, natural feeling. Uh, it should be clean and uncluttered. There should not be more um, a lot of details. It should be very because it's more comfortable for our psychology. It's more comfortable for us if the place is clean. If there is no many, many, many things inside, it's more um, comforting for us. Space integrity. Everything should seem nice. Yeah, should seems uh, very integrative. Interesting decor elements, dim lightning, everything is working with the vision. Uh, this is uh, the example of the treatment uh, cabin uh, in one of our spas. And you can see here all these, um, all these principles. It's clean. We don't have a lot of details here. Only the most important one, the bed, yeah, where everything is taking place and some small details just like aroma and something else. Not a lot, not a lot of uh, things here. Uh, it's natural. We use in natural colors. In, it's integrative. So it's uh, more or less in the same colors here. So it's nice to, what's uh, your feelings when you see this uh, treatment room? Can you tell me in the chat? What do you feel when you are uh, entering such um, such a room. Calm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? Uh -huh. It will be, yeah, balance, safety. Safety is very important here because when it's clean, why it's, uh, why it's uh, so important that it should be clean? because then it's about the safety. Mm -hmm. So safety is very important. Nothing is, uh, everything is clear here. Relaxing, private, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mindful. Yes, so a lot of positive words, yes? Even the atmosphere is working with you. Safe, mm -hmm. yes, that was the purpose. That's the purpose of the, so you see how the place is affecting us even without massage yet, <laughs> not without relaxation massage, we're already relaxed. We're already balanced, even looking for the picture. Yeah, we are not even uh, inside yet, even looking for the picture, you are coming. So this is the vision. This is how powerful it works. And then of course it comes the smell. Yes, so you can imagine if you're coming to this place and it smells nice and it smells naturally, you have pleasant aromas, no inappropriate odors, no unpleasant odors. It also gives you a lot of information. Smell actually is very powerful tool in the spa and in your business, I think as well. So in, if you are even working in reflexology or in uh, clinical, more clinical things, still the smell, for example, if you are coming, talking about the medicine, when you are coming to the hospital, how does it smell there? 
and which emotions it gives to you. So you're coming usually to the hospital. <laughs> Sometimes it's awful, yes, and it's frightening you. But some people like the smell of these medicines because it again gives them the safety. Sometimes it's, yes, sterile. This kind of, yes, of the um, uh, sterilization, antiseptics and so on. It gives us uh, the attitude that it's clean here, it's safe here. Of course, we don't want the same, uh, uh, the same story. Sometimes maybe we want the same story in our treatment camp. So we can, you know, uh, put the mindset actually. What do you want uh, your client, your guest to feel when he's entering your room? If you can answer this question, you can have the smell which will help you. Do you want him to be relaxed? Then put the relaxation smell. Yes, if you want him to be tonified, then do it. Actually, when we are working in our five spa uh, company, we have the special brand and we'll work a lot of with the aroma uh, because people are coming with, uh, to us with different purposes and aroma, the smells, it helps first of all. Sometimes it even helps us uh, to understand what uh, the guest wants. Because sometimes people doesn't want, doesn't know. He's coming to the spa and he says, okay, uh, which kind of the treatment do you want to have? He said, I don't know. And then you just give him five uh, aromas to smell. And he says, I like this best. This is his uh, mind unconscious, his nature is talking to him because he choose, for example, relaxation oil. Or he doesn't, he says, I want to relax, but, that, but then he's choosing the tonifying oil. Because sometimes when we are relaxed, when we are stressed, we think we need more relaxation, but no, we need tonifying, for example. And that's how our um, nature is talking to us. Mm -hmm. Neutral smell. Mm -hmm. Neutral smell, it also can be, because you never know if your client is allergic to smells. Of course. Uh, sometimes we're doing it the same. So you're coming to the place without smell. Uh, and then we're talking with the client and he's choosing himself the smell. So this is really very uh, powerful tool. You can use it in different ways. Uh, and I'm uh, always, uh, always, always, always uh, recommend you to use it. So for example, here you can also, I think, uh, um, imagine the smell hmm? with this open with these windows, uh, open windows, and so on. Water is coming, so you also can imagine the smell. And smell is very good anchor to your memory, actually. Uh, this is also uh, what the five star hotels are doing sometimes, and five star spas. Uh, they have their signature smell. Did you hear about this or not? So uh, they, for example, Hayat hotels, they have their signature smell from, uh, ah, I forgot, from one of the best uh, houses. So they have like one of the best perfumes and all around the world, uh, they have this smell. So when you're coming to some place and you understand, you definitely understand that's Hayat. More of that, if you're smelling these uh, notes somewhere else, you're again thinking of the Hyatt, how it was good, how it was nice, how it was. So you can also choose the signature smell for you and use it as an anchor, use it as a memory anchor for your guests, give them some presents with it uh, and so on. It really works. It really works very powerful and it doesn't work a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, more, many clinics, yes, fails of the disinfection, yes. Uh, Olga, yes, is joining us. Uh, eucalyptus also gives the feeling of cleanliness. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, eucalyptus, tea tree oil, uh, they also helps to uh, disinfect the place uh, and also gives a nice smell. So you can play with it alone, a lot of sto stories about this. 
Then we come to, this, uh, to the third sense, touch. This is our business, actually. We are touching people. <laughs> so that's why we should think uh, how we do it, uh, with uh, which attitude we do it. Every time when you are touching the person, first of all, it should be pleasant tactile sensations. Your hands should be warm. Uh, and when you are touching somebody, please touch him with love and care. Believe me, people feel this. Believe me, uh, there are so many things on our skin with which we really understand. If uh, the person who is making massage is thinking of his house and his wife and his children, or he's thinking about me, or he is caring about me. This is what we can sense from the touch. So please be very, 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 very responsible with this. Of course, usage of natural materials uh, also help. And uh, this is, I think Yep is talking a lot, I hope, <laughs> during his massage uh, treatment, so during his uh, trainings. So please really keep in mind, so before you touch the person, before you even start the massage, uh, try to put the mindset of the care and of the love, yeah? And then touch the person. It really feels, it really differs. Of course, sound, musical accompaniment, uh, no loud, no in sounds. This is what we are also working with. And you even can uh, also change the atmosphere with the sound. Yeah, it, di it differs if you're doing the massage in the relaxation music, with the classic music, uh, with the, I don't know, any kind of lounge music or with, I don't know, rock, for example. It's different atmosphere, it's different stories, and you can also manage it. So, I don't know, anybody's doing uh, the massage uh, with the rock? <laughs> I would try, <laughs> at least it's interesting. But it should be comfortable, yeah? Soft rock, uh, not, uh, please, <laughs> uh, nothing like death metal. Of course, if you uh, shoot 25 people, uh, it could be a good idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we all, why always, not? We, we always use, of course, this uh, relaxation music, but if they're going out, playing a football game, we should not listen to relaxation. Yeah, maybe music. it would be yeah, uh, it better to put him uh, Fred Mercury, where the champions, my friend. Yeah, it gives another atmosphere. It gives another attitude. So the music is important, and we can, as we said, in this holistic approach, everything that is surrounding us impact our psychological and our physical uh, inside and taste. Do not forget about the taste. It's also a very powerful tool to use it. Uh, and uh, in spas, in good spas, you will always have welcome drink. Uh, you will always have drink after the treatment. Uh, you will have some kind of the dried fruits and signature delights, something like this. And believe me, it doesn't cost money. So welcome drink is the cheapest thing ever. <laughs> You just uh, have the nice uh, jar with the water. You put there lime and lemon. You put there some kind of rosemary or I don't know, the basil, some kind of mint, just beautiful green uh, things and welcome drink is ready. And it's so nice and tasty, just, just try it, okay? Uh, believe me, it's, and uh, we had uh, in one spa, we actually had uh, the welcome drink, which was like ginger tea, something like this. Again, ginger is, doesn't cost a lot. You put some ginger, you put some uh, honey, and you put some mint or something like this. And people like it so much that uh, some people were coming to our reception and telling, oh, I came with my friend, please, please, please give him your welcome drink. Please, I told him so much about your welcome drink, just 
pour him some. So people spread the word about such small details. It doesn't cost money at all. It's just the way of thinking. Of course, drink after the treatment, especially if you have some kind of lymphodrainage or you have some kind of uh, any actual physical uh, things, uh, it's better to drink something, tea or water. And these uh, small dried fruits and signature details, signature delights, maybe it would be small chocolate with your lager. Maybe it would be just, uh, I don't know, dried uh, apple, uh, which is uh, corresponding to your concept and to your brand and marketing. So small details, but they do a lot of way, believe me. It's really amazing how it works. Just an example for you. That's what we have in five star spa, but it doesn't cost a lot. You can use it in your spa, in your cabin. We just put the water with the lemon and mint. We put some apples from this uh, place. They were grown in, this, uh, in the garden of this hotel. Uh, we put some tea, some sugar, and some things to do because we have the relaxation areas. Uh, there were nice albums with the photos, with nice nature photos, as well as uh, some um, doodles where you can uh, write a little bit, uh, draw a little bit. These small things, they make the difference. Just think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so this is the basic principles of the SPA, holistic approach and polysensitivity. Yes, so we are working every time you are coming, uh, your, so next day when you will come to your SPA cabin, to your SPA <laughs> treatment room, just think of the, am I using all the five uh, senses? Am I using all the impacts I can use? Is it visually nice? Is it uh, sound nice? Does it smell nice? Does it, uh, does my, everything is nice for the touch? What about my towels? What about the linen? Is it nice and comfortable? Or it's like, you know, uh, something very <laughs> tough. Do I have some uh, things to taste? Or I do not. If you don't have something, this is what you can improve right now, actually. Just a couple of days and, it you, and you can do it. Okay, then we come to the last part. Uh, five, star, five star service standards. Again, I will give you the examples of five star hotels and spas. This is like must have in every spa around the world. So it's world... Uh, standards but you can believe me implement it and can take it to your everyday life without any big budgets so first of all as i've told already the five size service is all about perfection perfection in every detail service is about details you should there is no such thing like unimportant detail in service every detail is very important so first of all, of course, your appearance. How do you look like? Hmm? Uh, you should always remember that you are the face of the company, even if it's one person company. Talking about marketing, we talk about personal brand a lot. And uh, what I suggest to you, uh, the next day when you're coming to your treatment room, to your job, just look in the mirror and uh, try to understand what impression did the guest get when he looks at you. You can ask somebody to do it actually. So first of all, you should look very professional. This is very important. We have three seconds to make the first impression of a person. Three seconds and we decided everything. We decided, do we trust this person or we don't trust him? Is he professional or he is not professional? Does it safe 
Is it safe to work with him or it is not? Three seconds. So your appearance should be really flawless. So we, are, we work in business of health and beauty and that's what our guests are expecting. So it's their expectations. We should be well groomed. So our clients, our guests pay very deep attention to the condition of our skin because we represent the cosmetic industry. So we are working in the more or less in the beauty, in the wellness, in the wealth, uh, <laughs> in uh, health. So we should look healthy. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it's uh, some kind of the expectation of our guests. Uh, it doesn't mean that we should all be slim and all should, of course, it would be good, but of course, um, everything has different conditions. But be well groomed, we can. Doesn't matter, yeah, what? Our hairstyle, our hands, and our hair is what they're focusing on. So uh, we should look clean and tidy, and we should look professional. This is one of the examples of the people who is working in the spas. Uh, and I think it's really works, all these words are working for them. Uh, first of all, we have this standard with the hair. Uh, when you are working with the clients, I hopefully everybody knows this, uh, but if you are working with the client, uh, your hair should be uh, put, put it ba should be put backward, uh, not like me <laughs> today, more like Maria uh, here, for example. Uh, and uh, this is the best actually hairstyle for the five star spas and hotels. And it's uh, comfortable for to work, it's clean and tidy, and it looks professional. Uniform and name badge is very, um, a very good working tool. Actually, there is a lot of uh, conversations now about the name badge, should I wear it or should I, should I don't wear it. Uh, I think if it's, uh, especially if uh, this is the first time coming guest, name badge is the tool for him, not for you, but for him. Because uh, believe me, uh, there was a lot of uh, different awkward situations. For example, at the beginning, you met the guest and you tell, told him his name, uh, your name, for example. My name is Maria, uh, nice to see you, so on. And then the time comes and the person forgets my name. It happens, yeah? It happened to all of us. Sometimes we forget the name. And this is very awkward situation because the person already told you his name. He is acting friendly with you, but you don't remember his name and you have no ways to learn it. And as we remember, in spa, in holistic approach, we shouldn't put in service, we shouldn't put the person, we shouldn't put the guest in an uncomfortable situation. That's why I think the badge is essential. Because then I, as a guest, can look at your badge and be reminded of your name. It helps me. And it helps you because you don't put the guest in the awkward and uncomfortable position. So I am for the badges. Of course, if uh, it's uh, your 10 years uh, long customer, of course he remembers your name and it's quite comfortable for him. But still, if you're coming to the clinic, to the medical clinic, yes, to the medical center, people are with badges there, doctor, Yes, so it gives also some kind of professionalism, of professional look. So I believe in badges, and I like to, and uh, uh, I think it's a good tool. Shoes. All employees wear closed shoes without heels, with non-slip soles that do not make a noise uh, during the work. Shoes should always be clean and tidy. Shoes should match the color of the uniform. Uh, simple rule, 
but you don't, uh, you can't imagine how often I see the mistakes here. Sometimes uniform is okay, but shoes, it's something terrible. Also, there is a rule uh, in a spa business that uh, the shoes should be closed. Uh, the client shouldn't, the guest shouldn't see your thumbnails on the, on the hair, on the foot. Hopefully it's understandable why, because it's about, about again, about the cleanliness, about the hygiene. So please use uh, the closed shoes. Here colors, uh, launch here should be pulled back from the base and pulled in the barn. Manicure, it's the safety reasons, clean, cut short. Uh, colors for manicure, usually uh, in the spa business, we use uh, neutral manicure. Uh, but of course, it depends again on your brand. It depends on your clientele, but uh, it's more, uh, for example, why, um, uh, why we use mostly in the five-star spas and hotels, we use uh, white linen. We use white towels, we use white linen, because uh, it gives uh, the feeling of cleanliness and safety. So again, of course, uh, you can uh, color the manicure with uh, black color, but for some people who are more uh, concerned about the safety and hygiene, and now we're all traumatized with this coronavirus about this, uh, so it's better to use nude or French. Jewelry, don't, <laughs> don't uh, use a lot. Uh, we actually had uh, once uh, Yep showed us uh, some uh, photo uh, from the championship, I think. Uh, and we have this uh, battle because in Russia, we're really strict about uh, the jewelries and any kind of stuff. So we believe that uh, the massage therapists should not wear anything on their hands. Yeah, not like me, no bracelets, no something like this, because it can hurt uh, the guest and it can hurt uh, the therapist himself. He can have a scratch and so on. It's not very good. But uh, we've seen, we've seen uh, the guy who had a lot of bracelets because it was in some kind of his, uh, uh, his brand and his um, style. But again, if we are talking about the five-star hotels and five-star spas, about the best level, uh, the highest benchmark, we do not use any bracelets and don't, we do not use any rings because it can hurt. So that's why it's only about the safety. Personal hygiene, I would not uh, talk about it. I think you know <laughs> that you should uh, smell nice. So punctuality. It's very important uh, and uh, it's uh, really, uh, really, really, really very important in service. It's the basic expectation of the guest that it's impossible to be late for the treatment. We wait for the guest, not guest is waiting for us. Uh, so if the guest is waiting for us, it's bad hospitality. Yes, we're not perfect hosts. Imagine you are coming uh, to the door, somebody invited you, to be his guest and then you're coming with the bottle of wine and flowers <laughs> to the door and nobody there. It's a terrific situation, I understand it. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, regarding perfume and deodorant, non-smell roll-ons. Yes, yes, Martin, totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, put a, mod, a lot uh, about this, but yes, do not use uh, perfume after shave with a strong odor. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot, yes, yes, and yes. There is a lot of bacterial under the ring, watch and bracelets. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It's the safety, it's the hygiene. You cannot clean up the bracelets. And uh, if you have some scratch, and the, this is the direct contact uh, with, the, with the blood, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's dangerous. It's dangerous actually, uh, both for the guest and for you, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
So punctuality, uh, ready to start the treatment. So what are the basic rules about the treatments? How to prepare yourself to the treatment? What does it mean to be ready? So the therapist must be ready to receive the guest no later than 10 minutes before the treatment. So before, the, before 10 minutes treatment, we should be prepared. Uh, readiness is to receive a guest is a prepared clean uh, cabin, pre clean room, all the necessary products and materials at hand. So everything that you would need uh, is already prepared. And five minutes before the treatment, you are in a clean and neat uniform with a friendly mood and smile, ready to meet the guest at the reception or pick it from where you pick it, yes? So 10 minutes before, we should be totally ready. Five minutes before, we're here smiling and waiting for the guests. This is the basic rule. And we are coming to my favorite atmosphere. We talked about it a lot already, but to summarize it, to give you some structure, uh, let's talk about this. So atmosphere, in my opinion, consists of two things. First, material, aroma, lightning, music, taste, visual, textiles, uh, amenities, everything, everything, details. So this is what we were talking about. Yes, five senses. And non-material something that is in the atmosphere but we cannot we can feel it but we cannot see it yeah like smile like positive approach like hospitality attention to the details kindness politeness language with which we use so this is non-material atmosphere but it works as well people yeah let me remind me you again people comes to us to be in a pleasant atmosphere they want to spend their time and nice, with nice and pleasant people. They don't want to struggle to come to have some uh, awful attitude. And we are, I don't know how it works. <laughs> I'm a really materialistic girl in this, but I know that atmosphere works so well. You can even rule uh, and impact the people. As we told in holistic approach, we impact people with the atmosphere. I've seen million times, like very uh, when a very stressed, uh, very angry person is coming to the spa, and then he hears this, uh, so he feels the smell, feels the odor, uh, he um, uh, hears the nice sounds, he sees the nice and wel welcoming person on the reception, and he relaxes himself down, just like in one minute it's happening you can see it with your own eyes so it's really a very uh, powerful tool and you should use it ultimate cleanliness and hygiene as we told to uh, talked already if uh, if uh, we don't see cleanliness we do not trust and sometimes it happens uh, when you are coming to some place uh, it's not clean. And believe me, uh, we uh, maybe even don't understand this with our conscious mind, but our subconscious shows us everything. And we see, okay, there is so many things here. I don't, I'm not sure if they're cleaning it right. Uh, I see some garbage on the floor. Maybe it's just small, uh, I don't know, here. Uh, but you can see it, believe me. It's uh, everything is our subconscious is scanning uh, everything around us. And then you're trying to relax the person, but he's not relaxing because he's so stressed inside because it's not safe for him to be in this uh, space. You can do whatever you want, but he use any relaxational technique, but he won't relax because it's not safe for him. So the cleanliness and hygiene is should be ultimate and when i was just starting uh in uh, the service business i have very nice mentor my um, uh, at that time my manager when i came to him he said maria it should be clean you should be as the operational manager you should be always um, 100 percent sure what is clean and i said okay how do i understand that it is really clean he said when you are coming to the uh, room 
you should be sure that you can eat from the floor. So if the food are falling down, for example, you can take it and eat it without any harm. That should be the feeling of the cleanliness. So this is like the benchmark. So when you're coming tomorrow or today to your cabin, with, look at, you, at it from, with the fresh eyes and ask yourself, can I eat here from the floor? If not, then you have something to improve. Hmm? And then, as I told again and again, every detail is important. There is no such thing as unimportant detail. The slightest flaws should be eliminated immediately, whoever found them. So we do our best. Uh, there is no, you know, mm, so there should be a, such an attitude that it's no, there is no unimportant things. In five stars, in good service, every detail is so important, everything. So general rules, enter and exit, uh, meal. Why we don't eat meal in the guest area? Because of the smells, because of the odors. If we're eating there, uh, please uh, then use the fresh air and so on. Because uh, you are coming to relaxation and then you have some kind of the fish, for example, or cabbage uh, smell. Of course, it ruins, it ruins your uh, professionalism. Uh, okay, just a moment. I see the question. What do we do if the guest is very late? How does it affect the next guest in line? Do you shorten the service for the guest who is late? Or do... It's very usual question. Of course, we have such guests. Um, so, it depends on the situation. <laughs> my usual uh, answer. It depends on the situation. So if uh, you have the free time uh, after, of course, uh, you can uh, maybe move the time, but you should talk to the person. Remember that you are host here and you suit the rules. You should talk to the person uh, said, dear Mr. Tankberg, uh, today you were late. Fortunately, I had the time after so we can, uh, we do not shorten uh, your treatment, but next time uh, I couldn't do it. So please be in time and better 10 minutes before the treatment so you would be prepared and so on and so on. Uh, if you don't have time afterwards, I think the next guest shouldn't suffer from uh, the first guest. So if it's just about like five minutes delay, maybe it's okay. Uh, but again, you should first talk to the second person. You should ask him, uh, dear Olga or dear Maria or dear Bettina, uh, is it okay for you to wait for five minutes? Because we have some kind of uh, things happening. Uh, I need uh, five minutes more. Is it okay for you? If he said, no, it's not okay for me, then we uh, shorten uh, the service. So every time, uh, yeah. So every time we're talking with the guest again, that please do not be late. So I think this, yes. uh, uh, if the person is late and you don't have time, uh, then it should be shortened or you can suggest the other time. So you said, okay, yep, yeah, uh, now uh, you're late for 30 minutes. So I have only 30 minutes left. Uh, we can make the shorter treatment or we can change the time for the next time when you will come. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I answered the question. Yeah, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joshua and Isaac, uh, yeah, uh-huh, thank you. So of course, smoking is not allowed. Uh, do you, of course, uh, if you smoke, uh, sometimes it's impossible not to smoke during, but usually we recommend not to work during the shift because believe me, as the person who is non-smoking, uh, it feels so not nice when the person is smoking and you can feel it through the hair, you can feel it uh, through the hands and it's really wasting uh, the experience. So if you, 
don't smoke it's great if you smoke please don't do it during your working hours it really really spoils uh, the experience mm -hmm. uh, do the guest pay or not if he is late the guests have taken your time it depends on the rules you set uh, in different uh, things, uh, in different companies, different. Uh, for me, uh, it's better if you have uh, the rule that you could take the money. So it's better that it should be written somewhere and the guest is aware of this. And when uh, he's making, for example, the uh, reservation through the phone or through email, you uh, write this down that please be at time if you are late we can uh, we can uh, put so we can take this money from you uh, but in uh, practice uh, so i usually prefer not to charge the people especially if it's not uh, no, especially if there were some really critical conditions for example it was the traffic jam uh, suddenly or something happened with the car so i'm trying uh, to um, to go through the situation if it's uh, if it's um, so it's like with your <laughs> uh, maybe uh, with um, i don't know with your guest again yeah so if your guest is late uh, and you cannot charge so if it is uh, available for you not to charge him do not charge him uh, if you think that you should charge him charge him hmm? but uh, you should have this uh, word uh, you should have this um, explanation in your booking and uh, so he should be aware of this that you could charge him mm -hmm. then uh, there will be no conflicts Okay, pro alcohol and smoking, we will not talk. I understand, it's not interesting. <laughs> More about the late. Uh, use of guest rooms and equipment for the guests. Again, usually we do not recommend, uh, so we usually have the separate staff room, uh, so where the people can sit, drink tea. So this is their room and uh, the guest room is the guest room. So we try not to use the equipment and everything. So again, it's about the atmosphere. So the person, when it comes uh, to you, he should understand that this place was created and designed and prepared specially for him. Uh, and uh, it's always nice. Uh, mobile phones, uh, talking about the mobile phones, uh, I strongly recommend you to switch off the mobile phones during the treatment. Switch off not only the sound, but switch it to kill it maybe <laughs> even and to put in the, in the locker or somewhere where you cannot hear the sound. Because uh, I was uh, quite a lot of times, it was such a mess when I was coming with the audit, for example, or is this like the mystery guest or, or something like this, or just like a guest normal one. And the person was 100% sure uh, that he switched off the telephone and then it rings. So safety rule, <laughs> put it away. Then there will be no strange situations. Uh, perfect cleanliness and order. We talked about it. It should be clean. It should be clean. Everything. It should be clean. So standards of workplace. Uh, I would know you would have this checklist. Uh, again, you can print it out and come to your room and have this checklist. Yeah, my floors. Are there stains? Are there oil stains? Uh, are they sticky or not? Uh, uh, furniture, showers, linen, massage tables, cosmetics, utensils, uh, everything uh, is um, important. So this is the checklist for you. You can use it or for your colleague, for example, if you're working both, you can use it as a checklist. So every day just to mark if everything is okay. Again, uh, this room, our comfortable and nice and cozy room. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the standard of the bedding and I'm again strongly recommend you actually it would be your homework to prepare such kind of the standards of the bedding how do you prepare your most important working 
to uh, the place where you spend and your guests spend a lot of time. What do you do? So here is one of the standards. So this is the standard how to prepare this kind of setting. Uh, standard one, so step one, we put towels to be, so it would be soft, yes? Something very soft. Uh, then it's usually, so it's very uh, good to make it in photo actually, because then you have to see these steps one by one, how it should be done. Then we're using most of all, we're using sheets, uh, not uh, the plastic sheets, but the real linen, like in the good hotel room. And it also gives a huge impact. So first of all, it's much more cost safely than the towels uh, because it's lighter. It doesn't take so much to make the laundry and it gives the different, um, uh, different uh, sense, so sense on the skin. So we would uh, use the, the sheets, then we prepare it for the treatment, and when we prepare it for the decoration. So every time uh, when uh, you are not using the bed, so if you are not expecting the client just right now, one after other, yes, if you're expecting one, uh, you do this kind of treatment. Uh, if you are, does, you, if you doesn't expect somebody, uh, your room should be prepared for the very beautiful look. And then we had this bedspread, put it like this, make some kind of decorations. And yes, uh, what about the decorations? I would talk about this uh, again. Uh, you can use some kind of the signature things. For example, here in this place, uh, it's called Riviera. So it's about the sea, it's about the beach, and that's why we use the, the seashell as the decoration element. First of all, it works, it's like seashell plate. It works uh, for the jewelries, if the person wants to put some jewelries away. Uh, but the second, uh, it works also as the brand uh, anchor. Yeah, the brand signature thing. So you can also, one of our friends and the colleagues, she's used, for example, uh, in her massage school, uh, she has uh, the symbol of her massage school is green apple. And she is using glass uh, green apples as the decoration. So you can also think about your brand, what you can use as the signature to, uh, as the signature decor of your bed. Then I give you some examples of the cleanliness in the cabin, how we organize the place. Because even inside your cupboards, inside uh, these things, this, this one, it should be nice. Because maybe you open it and believe me, the guest sees it. Uh, so it should be nice, it should be comfortable for you, and it should be nicely organized. Organized. We suggest to use different kind of plastics, uh, plastic box, so you can see everything is transparent and everything is organized. So this is, you see again, all about details. Even inside, even inside uh, in our uh, working place that maybe guests will never see, even there it's about the details because it's about our professionalism. It's like, you know, on the good kitchen of the good chef or the good cooker, everything would be in place. So it should be the same with you. You should, you know, with the closed eyes, you should uh, grab whatever you need. Hmm? Okay. And some before and afters. I know you like this kind of stuff. So this was before. So uh, uh, what, uh, what's my goal here? to show you some examples how the place is changing uh, if you're putting some attention to this. So that was the normal uh, traditional looking like massage room. I think most of you have something like this, yeah? 
Everything was okay. Here was the towel, here was the plastic. Uh, even I don't know if you can see it here, even they thought of some kind of the decoration. So when the people is looking uh, down, he sees some kind of decoration, some candles and so on. Everything is nice. But when we do some changes, this is the same room, not the same angle, but the same room. And uh, what do you think? Did the atmosphere changes here? Does it look a little bit different to you? For me, it differs. <laughs> uh, and we did it with small details. We just put in a different kind of way the towels. We put some kind of the decorations here and it feels totally different. Uh-huh. Uh, good question about uh, ceiling. The guests spend a lot of the time on the back. I believe the ceiling would, should be nice. Uh, of course, uh, it's not always um, possible. Uh, if we are talking about the new uh, place to start the business, I really recommend you to take into the consideration the ceiling. It's a very good point, Martin, thank you. Uh, because, of course, they can spend a lot of time on the back. But if you don't, uh, <laughs> if uh, you already have not very nice ceiling, sometimes it happens, what you should, what you can do? First of all, you can play with the light. So you can put uh, the lights like here, yes, in the corners and switch off the main light. So the person is not looking all the way to this, uh, to the ceiling fixtures. Actually, we don't use ceiling fixtures a lot in spa. We mostly use um, corner light or some kind of the floor light, floor lamps and so on. And the second trick, uh, if you don't have very nice uh, ceiling, you can use like in the five spas we're doing a lot, you can use special, uh, how you call it, pedals. So you can put the towel, the facial towel on the eyes or you can put special um, patches on the eyes. Mm -hmm. Of course, first you should ask the guest if he is not claustrophobic, if he doesn't, uh, you know, so if he likes this and then you put, actually, I, even if you have nice ceiling, I recommend you to put something on the eyes. It relaxes much more better the person if he has something on the eyes. You can try it and uh, feel the difference yourself. Hmm? So this is two tricks if you don't have nice ceiling. First is uh, yeah a mask, some kind of a mask uh, for the face uh, or patches, something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, yes, have to leave. Yes, we are finishing almost, I think 10 minutes more and we will be done. So some more before and afters. You see, even in the not very uh, big places, not very special places, it's just about uh, the attitude. It's just about thinking through uh, to add some green flowers like I have here or like we have here. This is the clinic uh, in Denmark, actually, in this very nice uh, uh, city, which I cannot pronounce. It's <laughs> called yeah, Odense. <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah, it's, you can called, it's called Odense. You can hotel. tell a little bit what we did here. So what was your impression about uh, mm, yeah. what we did here? Mm -hmm. um, to give me some break. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a short break and I will tell you tell it in, in Danish. Okay. Uh, this here is a picture uh, from Masseurskolen Fyn, which uh, is one of our partners, where we uh, took Maria over for and kigge skolen igennem for at øh, forbedre detaljerne. Øhm, og øh, og det, det har hun jo så gjort på, på blandt andet den her måde op i højre hjørne, det øverste billede af Brixen der. Der er alle de der detaljer med, hvordan puderne og tæpperne skal være. At det indførte de. De tog simpelthen et billede af det, øh, fordi det er, det er sådan på Massørskolen Fyn, der øh, er de forpligtet til at lave en masse øh, elevbehandlinger, og, øh, og så skal de jo selvfølgelig vide, hvordan Brixen skal øh, gøres klar til den næste klient og til den næste klient. Så kom der sådan en helt 
en super god vane øh, med det. Også fordi de var flere, der øh, skulle øh, massere øh, i klinikken, eller i zonesapi, eller hvad de nu skulle. Så på den måde så kunne de, var de altid sikre på, at når de kom til øh, og skulle arbejde, så var det hele gjort klar til vedkommende på den samme måde. Så det var sådan set øh, historien bag det billede. Yes, Maria, I have explained. Yes, you have explained. Okay, thank you so much. I had a chance to drink, <laughs> to drink some water. Okay, guys, we are mostly finished. So the last, so I don't know what Yepi was talking about. <laughs> Hopefully nice things as well, as always. Uh, but yes, uh, you can change with the small details. What my idea here is the small details uh, with even not buying anything new. Uh, not uh, doing something uh, extraordinary with a small attention to the details you can make huge impact to the atmosphere into the place where you're working and uh, to the place uh, where a guest is coming so this is just about the attitude it's just about the mindset and the question uh, do i like the place is it comfortable uh, is it comfortable for my guest uh, This is the questions you should ask uh, yourself ev actually every day. So from time to time, uh, you should change something uh, to make it more comfortable every day. And of course, uh, as I told already mentioned, it's very important to bring in your own style. Yeah, it's about the branding, it's about the marketing. Uh, you, should be, you should stand out and be remembered and uh, you should meet the promises of your brand. And believe me, you already have brand, even if you're just starting, uh, and you should work on it. So what it can be, so how to bring uh, your um, uh, brand uh, into the, uh, into the, how to bring your brand uh, into your atmosphere. I showed here the example of our five spa. So first of all, uh, of course, there should be some visible signage. So if you have some logo, if you have some brand, like for example, Yepi is doing here, uh, he has this World Championship Massage brand and IMA brand behind him. Uh, and all the time we're looking at Yepi. <laughs> uh, it's coming to us, yes? It's making the marketing anchor in our mind. So visible signage, your brand, your logo, think of the place where you could put it. Uh, then, of course, you can have the complementary color accents like pillows, like this decorative covering, some kind of the uh, things that uh, emphasize your color, your brand colors and some signature details. For example, it can be some greenery or it can be some uh, apple, like I told you before, or it could be the seashell, something that is also corresponding with your brand and with your logo and or with the, your concept or with your idea of the brand. So uh, everything what you want to put in the mind of your guest. And here are some examples uh, how we do it in the spa catering business. Uh, what is spa catering? Uh, we're doing like the outside events. We are coming to the big events, to the big shows uh, uh, and making the spa corner there. Some kind of the place where the people can come and have some short, uh, short, uh, we call it not treatment, of course, it's called spa appetizers, we call it. So like short treatments, for example, hand massage or uh, neck and shoulder massage or the head massage, something like five, from five to 15 minutes uh, to make the break during the conference or uh, to have a nice uh, welcome during, uh, before the event. So in different situations, so on the weddings, on the jubilees, on the events, we did it a lot. So this is our spa corner. Uh, and we have here all the brand uh, things you've seen. So we have the signage here. We have a, a lot of greenery. It's our signature. We have always bring a lot of greenery like eucalyptus or something like this, which both gives the smell and gives the nice uh, natural and fresh feel. We use a lot of candles and we have these uh, colors, our signature colors for the 
furniture and for the details so the people can see our brand colors. Uh, for example, again, these details, uh, as you see, small details, nice arrangements. It also, also works and it creates a really nice atmosphere. You see here, here and there, and even how we uh, uh, propose, um, how do we propose uh, the cream? Yeah, these uh, lotions to make the hand massage. As I told you, why we called five? Because we're working with the uh, concept of the uh, five uh, elements. Oh, <laughs> I forgot the word. <laughs> with the five elements, uh, you know, maybe if you are also known reflexology, the Chinese medicine, they use a lot these five elements uh, story. And we use it as well. So we use different uh, colors. So uh, when the person is coming, we show him different colors and ask him to choose uh, which color he likes more now. And it helps us to understand uh, what result he wants to get. If he wants to be relaxed or he wants to be uh, uh, tonified or he wants to be uh, uh, detoxified, uh, doesn't matter. So it's uh, five uh, elements. And then uh, depending on this element, we provide him with the special lotion with the aromas of this element. For example, if it's he chooses the three element, uh, which is uh, about the flexibility and we're doing him some kind of the flexibility massage during this uh, uh, 15 minutes and we give him uh, the lotion uh, for the aroma uh, treatment, we give him the lotion with uh, some kind of the, um, for example, verbena or different kind of the tree scents. Does it make sense? <laughs> Hopefully, yes. So depending on this, we play with the aroma. So here in this 15 minutes, we play with the color and we play with the aroma. So in 15 minutes, and we uh, play with the technique. So in 15 minutes, the person in 10 minutes sometimes, if it's big event, it can be even five minutes. But in this five minutes, the person gets the whole spa atmosphere. He get the whole spa result. We are working with his uh, vision, yeah, because everything is nice, everything is beautiful. We work with his uh, sense of smell. We works with his sense of taste because we're also providing him our welcome drink uh, and of course touch. So we, in 15 minutes, we play with all the senses. We use the holistic approach even in 10 minutes. So you can definitely do you it in one hour, yeah? <laughs> uh, our uniform is also in our brand colors. You can see our guys, the beige, the name beige, again with the, our logo on it. Uh, and uh, if we are working in the spa catering, so this is the uh, uniform we work in, in cabins and in spas. And here, if we're working in some kind of uh, uh, events, we're using this kind of the, how called? I forgot the English word at the end of the lecture. <laughs> apron. So we use such aprons and it's really easy to wear. It's really remarkable and it doesn't cost a lot because you cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, it's a very big team. We cannot uh, afford uh, to have a special uniform for everybody, but apron you can use on anybody. So if, uh, you're coming and wanting to make uh, to join our team you just get the apron and the white shirt so that's it so that's how you implement the brand in your surroundings how you implement the brand in your culture and in your service so the homework which you will have uh, hopefully you can do it we do not uh, it's not uh, obligatory uh, you're all adults uh, but uh, I think it would be especially, uh, especially useful for those who just start the business, but also for those who already has the business, it's good improvement. To make the bedding standard, uh, to prepare your own standard for massage bed preparation, 
with photos and text. You can do it in Word or you can do it in PowerPoint. And if you send it to school Red Spapro to this email or to Yepi, and he will uh, send us uh, as well. Uh, you can give, uh, you can receive our feedback. We will give you recommendations, how to improve it, uh, and what to add more to create better atmosphere. So this is just the homework for you. It's good opportunity to have like the private uh, consultation with us. So do not waste it. And as uh, I, as I told you already, you have 72 hours to make something after the webinar. To get, uh, to get the knowledge settled in your mind. So please do not waste this time and you do something. So that's more or less all. If you have some questions, uh, please uh, give it. Uh, I see that there are some uh, comments from Olga. Olga Zorina is uh, our coordinator and uh, uh, our most valuable team member. So thank you, Olga, for supporting me in the chat because I don't have some time times. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have any questions, please write them down. If not, uh, let's come to the feedback. So please uh, write down in the chat or if you want to speak up, you can also speak up. Uh, so the answers on three questions. Uh, first, What's your main emotion after today's training? Uh, so what's your feeling now? Second, what's your main takeaway from the training? So the idea that you remembered the most, uh, the idea that gave you the most uh, uh, biggest insight, the idea that you liked a lot. And third, what, uh, what you will definitely do in next 70 hours, 72 hours. So what's your action plan for the next 72 hours to implement the knowledge uh, that you have? Uh, what ideas do you have about this? Please. Uh -huh. Anne Muller, yes, it's difficult to make photos if you don't have a clinic yet or a place to do the treatment. So uh, you don't, if you don't do, if you don't have anything at all, uh, of course, but I will give you also the hint. Uh, one of our, fr of our students on international massage uh, teachers course, she do what she did because uh, the, her cabin was closed because of the coronavirus. She took our presentation and she just uh, colored so she chose the colors and she colored uh, this um, coaches with her own colors. She thought uh, she changed this uh, decoration. So you can just do it schematic, just to think of your brand colors. What would you like when you will be opened? What you would like to, which impression would like to create? So you can go creative. You can go creative. So it's just your wish. Uh, okay, I will implement the host guest mindset even more in my marketing. Yes, and the policy and stability. Great, thank you. Maybe you have, ah, okay. Uh huh, yes. Mm -hmm. Why two sheets? One below, second, uh, the guest is covering with the sheet. Mm -hmm. That's why two sheets. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming back to the feedback, please, guys. I really need your feedback. And th this is also making your training more effective. So what's your main emotion after the training, your main takeaway from the training, and what you will definitely do in the next 72 hours? Maybe, uh, maybe we should uh, stop sharing screen, the screen, and then maybe we can see the faces. <laughs> And they can okay. raise the hand and we can uh, have a... Okay, let's do like this. Um, and then we can okay. allow people to get in. Yes, of uh, course. Yes, of course. Who has a question or can tell us uh, what they have learned today and they can take and use? Let's do... Uh, Tina, I think. Hold Tina on, hold on. The... Uh, hold on. Uh, you have to unmute and maybe I have... Uh, Gina, can you unmute? Yeah, thank you. 
Um, first of all, I will say very thank you for today. Uh, I have um, I was a little bit skeptic uh, because it was in English, and I thought, oh no, not again. <laughs> My English is not the best. But after this, I have um, I think you have. Um, you have allowed me to say more to my employees about all what you're saying about details and about smile and be nice and look uh, proper is what I'm saying to my employee all the time. And they are looking at me as I'm, oh no, not mom again. <laughs> but I say it again and again, and I want it to be tidy and I want it to be nice. So now I've been taking some of the pictures you have been showed here on the screen, and then I will make some kind of, um, uh, we have on Facebook um, a group for all of us, um, and I will take them and I will tell them what you have been told and tell them that mom has right. Yeah, mom was right, as always. Yeah, I, would, I would like them to listen to me and I would like it to be like that. And then I can tell the, the manager over me that, um, that there's um, some kind of, I know why I don't want people who don't look tidy. Um, he, he sent one to me once, uh, one he knew. And he said to me, yeah, but she, can, she is very good uh, in, in doing the massage. And then I told him, yeah, but look at her. She walks like a dog. And sorry, but I was my first impression. Of course, of course, uh, it's very important. Her, her yeah, you cannot change it, yeah. No, and her way of talking to me was a little bit like in Copenhagen, we have some kind of places where they talk very flat very <laughs> not nice uh -huh. the, her her attitude was I, I didn't want he, uh, her to give me some massage and i tried to tell him and then she he said to me yeah but she, she has to be just as long as she's good and then i said no uh, mm -hmm. so now i can tell him what you have been told me and say yeah but i was right um yes so, so I would say thank you. It has been very, very inspiring. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I see that some guys are having to run. Thank you for uh, sharing the feedback in the chat. Thank you, Tina. Yes, uh, you are right. Uh, the impression is very important. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything about this. If it's unsafe for us, if it's unpleasant for us, we cannot relax, we cannot achieve the result which we are coming for. So this is, unfortunately, it's how it works. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the look is very important. Mm -hmm. Somebody else want to share their emotions and ideas, guys? Somebody else was. Yep, do you see? Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> uh, don't be scared, Martin. You always have something to say. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm looking I, I think he's uh, actually. I think he's. Uh, he's. He's. And it's not possible for him for to chat only to chat, but uh, he's not. Ah, possible only to, to chat. Uh, Maker. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, guys. We will not uh, torture you anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you want to torture them a little bit? No, no, no. I think uh, I will speak uh, in Danish a little bit for a while. Okay. Yes. Uh, well. Okay. Ja, ja, ja. Also, we were to come to the end, and. Maria er, altså, hun tager altså imod jeres øh, mails, og hun svarer, svarer jer. Øh, så prøv at sætte jer lidt ind i opgaven, og så øh, send mig de her mails, og så skal jeg nok sende dem videre, hvis I ikke lige fik skrevet med den der mailadresse ned. Øh, jeg håber, at... Øh, jeg synes selv, at det gik godt. Jeg synes selv, hun er tydelig. Øh, jeg håber, I fik noget ud af det. Hun bruger selvfølgelig nogle termer, som, for, som vi måske ikke vil bruge. Altså, cabin er jo i virkeligheden vores klinikker og, eller vores håb og sådan noget. Så jeg tænker, at der nogle gange, så var der lige nogle ord, hun brugte, som var anderledes. Men sådan er det bare, når man arbejder internationalt. Men ellers, så synes jeg jo faktisk, det gik meget godt, og vi runder af her. Er det ikke bare sådan, at vi lige giver thumbs up til hende og siger tak for i dag?
Yepi, Yepi, we cannot hear you. Okay. Thank no, you, Maria. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you for all of us. Uh, it has been uh, interesting and it was very nice that you were sharing your ideas and, and thoughts about these topics. And uh, we have all learned something. And I've told them that you, of course, receive all uh, mails uh, and so on uh, in order to, uh, to uh, do their homework, really. And you will reply as fast as you can. Isn't that right? Yes, 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 yes. So uh, what we will do now, I will send the, the presentation uh, to Yepe and he will send it to all of you guys. Uh, and then uh, in the presentation, you will have this email for the homework uh, or all grow it again, uh, school uh, hmm. dot spa pro. So you can send uh, your uh, homework there and we will, as as soon as we will have time, we will uh, give you the feedback. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you, guys. Way, yeah, oh, one, one, one more thing. Yeah. Because uh, some of them are in the uh, reflexologist or acupuncture therapist, uh, and they are in a group, so it's easy for me to send it. The, the rest of the guys, yeah, Andra, you please lee, uh, send my in mail. Please send me an email if you want the, the PowerPoints. All right. Uh, okay, cool. Are we rounding, ending up, rounding up? Yes, thank you guys uh, for being today with us. Hopefully, yes, uh, you enjoy. I enjoyed a lot. Of course, I miss a lot our offline meetings and uh, um, the energy from the group is uh, a little bit different in online than in offline, but still thank you for your active participation. Thank you for your kind words we are writing now in chat. I will... Uh, Ah, it's so nice. <laughs> Hopefully you have a, a lot of sights. See you. See you in summer in Hopen Copenhagen, I hope. Uh, see you and always warm welcome, Russia. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>